Okay guys, welcome to the video. Um, so in this segment, we're we'll teaching you how to get the motherboard ready along with the processor and if I have time, if I have time, the RAM as well. If not, I'll get the RAM done in the next video, but it should be possible in this video. If you're joining this video for the first time, if you didn't watch the first segment, well the first segment basically give you a rough idea as to planning your budget and researching on parts that might be uh, suitable for what your computer build needs are, that's the first video. A link is to that video is in the video description. The next video, which is the previous one before that, was getting the uh, tools ready, the power supply and the case assembled together, and also rules on preventing static. So I'm gonna go over the static rule just one more time, just to place heavy emphasis on this. So what I've done is put the power supply into the case, it's actually sitting over here just behind me, and it's plugged in, but it's not turned on. The power supply is actually turned off. I have an anti-static strap, the alligator clip, is be connected to the case itself, or if you can, you can even connect it to the power supply, which helps prevent any static and keeps you grounded. If you want to connect it to the case, because in my example, I can't connect it to the power supply, um, once it's placed in the case, there's no holes for me to clip the alligator clip to, you can actually clip this to the case itself on a metallic surface that's not painted, just a plain metallic surface. Okay, so for the sake of keeping things clear and out of the way of the video, I'm now officially grounded. So now let's get prepped with this equipment. So I don't need my X-Acto knife. I shouldn't, but I'll keep it here in case there's any tape on the boxes. Again, I'm grounded. Get the processor out of the way and the RAM. So let's start with the motherboard. So let's just keep that somewhere else. So choosing the right motherboard is very dependent on what your needs are. It is some of the special features of the motherboard. Does it support USB 3.0? Yes or no? That's very dependent. And do you want that it's extra speed? Yes or no? Again, that's up to you. How many RAM slots does it have? And of course, the type of processor that you have has to match the motherboard itself. So for in this case, um, it's going to be listed somewhere on the box. Right, so on the back of the box it says CPU type, it'll support LGA 1150. And that's exactly what this processor is as well. So you can just pretty much Google, if you're looking for a processor, 1150, you can find plenty of processors, plenty of motherboards, but they have to have the same socket type. This is 1150 LGA, and this motherboard does support that. So that's very important to keep in mind. Most motherboards will include this clip. This will tend to go on the back of your case, and it pretty much indicates what type of ports you'll have available, DVI, uh, USB 3.0, blah, 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 blah. You're gonna put this on your case afterwards, not just yet, and it's gonna also attach to your motherboard as well. Usually includes some sort of manuals, warranty guides. You may or may not need this. It depends on you. It includes some sort of software update. Perhaps there's a BIOS up software update available. The BIOS updates you can tend to usually get from the manufacturer's website, but sometimes if you want to, it might be a good idea to insert it and pop it in the first run. I prefer to just go to the website and run it from there instead because they might have a more updated version on their website. Okay, so what's that thing most people get wrong with the motherboard? Well, it's very plain and simple. This is an anti-static bag. Many of the components you're going to get, including say your graphic cards, will come in one of these. So while it's rattling around, being processed for shipping at the manufacturer, being shipped to your house, whatever, all that friction, while well, this bag is going to prevent any static from being built up. Now here's the part that most people get wrong. Now take this out. Again, I'm still grounded with my ankle. Take it out. What do most people do? They put it on top of the bag. Here's the wrong part. All these bags, the inside prevents static. The outside doesn't. It's quite rare to find a bag that prevents static on the outside. There's no need for you to put it on there. It's quite safe to, however, put it on your motherboard box. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Once you take it out of the bag, this is garbage. Do not use it again, unless you have some other old computer parts that you might want to keep for storage. Put it back in here and keep it in storage. That's quite safe. Okay, so at this point, we're going to get the processor ready for placement on the computer. This is pretty much self-explanatory. A lot of these ports are quite fitted. You can't really mix them up too much. If you're not too tech savvy, again, you can't really mix it up much. It's pretty hard to do anything wrong like that. So what you're gonna do is get the processor and fan out of its box. This is the fan that came with it. I'm just gonna leave it there for now. Now, if in case in any of these videos, including this one, people are like, why didn't you do water cooling? That's such an expensive computer. 
there are some tiny upgrades I'll be making later on. For now, I just want to get the most basics done. Now, you want to be really careful with this process. You don't want to touch this bottom part here, and you don't want to get your fingerprints anywhere on it. Well, even here, for example. And you're holding it from the sides, and that's pretty much it. Now, when it comes to the processor and the motherboard, the placement is pretty much basic. On this particular motherboard, which is a very common style, it's a zero insertion force. So it requires no force on your end in terms of placing the processor there. So let me just show you. So I have this clip up here, and the way to open it is to take this clip, slide it out, and let it release up, and it falls back just like that. Now I'm going to get the processor out of the casing. And you actually see that there's actually grooves for your fingers to go around and grab it just like that. That's what you want to do, okay? And on the processor itself, there's like this little golden triangle right there on this corner where my index finger is. And it's almost impossible to see unless you're really looking for it and you're not aware of this and you're new to doing this. But on this particular motherboard, there's actually a lining around the placement of where the processor is going to go. On this particular corner, there's actually a little dot indicating that this triangle aligns with that dot on this corner. If you can't find it, if you have bad vision, you don't have your reading glasses or whatever you need with you, there's actually two grooves on the top part. One here, one there. So one here, one there. And they're actually going to line up with a piece of plastic here and here. Basically, it will not fit otherwise unless you line it everything perfectly. It should just not rest well. But since I know I'm going to do that, you are not going to slam this in, you're not going to push it in, and you're not going to touch anything here. If a single one of these tiny microscopic needles bend, the whole motherboard is pretty much garbage. There's nothing you can do about it. So it's zero insertion force. So I'm just going to take the processor, just drop it there, wiggle it around. As you can see, it, it wasn't in place, but now that I just wiggled it, it's fine. I'm going to wiggle it again just to make sure very little force. Again, just to make sure everything's okay. Shaking it, it's fine. Wiggle it the other way if I want to. It's resting, it's there, and I can actually see the, the plastic pieces on the two sides, notches, are aligned and resting well. Now at this point, what you're going to do, this is going to require a bit of force though. This is the part that requires force. You're going to take that arm back, put this cover on carefully, make sure that it's aligned with this bolt. Uh, these type of fittings might vary and differ depending on what type of motherboard you have. And you're going to take the arm and make sure it slides in there first, in that bolt. This part is requiring a bit more pressure than before, and you see the top pops off. That's quite okay. Insert the arm under the bracket. This is now garbage. You don't need this anymore. It's just like a protective cover to prevent any damage from those needles that were on the motherboard. Process is done. So the thinking part of the computer is now done. The annoying part, actually, is the fan. I don't know why. I never liked these clips for the fans with Intel CPUs. I think they're practically garbage, but for some reason they have to and want to use them. This is actually more difficult for me to put on than the processor itself. And what you need to do is actually make sure that the fan wiring is outside. Mine's actually stuck, so whoever packed this didn't do a good job. This is all the space I need to get out, and it's going to connect to the motherboard for power. So you're going to actually clip this on. There's actually four sockets, or four plastic screws, type of brackets you want to say. And there's four holes as to where it's going to align. Place it in here, line up the holes. This type of fan from my processor actually has arrows on each pin telling you which way to screw it in to tighten it. Let's do this one out. In. And the more you get in, the tighter it becomes and more difficult. In. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to get the RAM prepared. Now, this particular motherboard has four slots for RAM, right here. These are very long slender ones and they're always aligned perfectly next to each other with very little breathing space between them. And mine are actually color coded. It's a little bit difficult to see, but I have black, gray, black, gray. So the reason they've done this is because if you're gonna use two sticks, in my instance, I'm gonna fill up all four, but let's pretend you have two. You wanna make sure that the colors match. So if you're only gonna use two, make sure they go black, black, or gray, gray. You want to make sure there's always a consistency. This allows for better memory flow. Um, and you also want to keep in mind that they should always be the same brand name, same speed. Always keep everything the exact same. So I knew that I was just going to fill up all four of them. So I just went ahead and bought four of the same kind right off the bat. So this is a practice you always want to keep. So if you plan to fill in two for now, 
and in the future you want to fill in the other two, try to make sure it's the same brand name, same clocking speed, same speed, everything, okay? Okay, so my particular RAM actually looks pretty cool. If you're making a more basic computer, the manufacturers won't go overboard like that. They'll just keep it quite simple. But this is quite easy. You can actually put the motherboard into the case, then put the RAM on, or the other way around. I prefer to put the RAM in first and then put the entire case, uh, sorry, the entire motherboard into the case. Now you're actually going to no notice that there's actually some grooves here, 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 here. So they basically go across like that. And you'll notice that one side of the RAM, this side, is longer than this side. Do the same thing. This side is longer than this side. So you match it up. That's all there is to do. Now, putting it in here is a different story. So you have two brackets here. You can notice that one pops open. This stays closed no matter what. But this side opens. I'm going to open all of them so you guys can get a better view. So you're just going to slide it in there just like that. And you hear that clipping noise. There. It's one stick done. So I'm going to show that to you guys one more time. So long wise is here, long wise is here, short, short. So I have this clip open. This one does not open. Some other boards will allow both, but mine doesn't. I'm going to insert it just straight in. Just like that. Give it a little bit of force. This side clicked in. This side clicked in and snapped on its own. I now know that that piece of RAM is stick and stuck in there as well. And do the exact same thing twice over or how many times you need to for as many RAM sticks as you have. Okay, so I'm done. So what I've accomplished is that I have the processor and the fan on. I haven't connected the fan power yet. I'll do that after. I have all the RAM inserted. And that's it. So the next step is to take this entire unit and place it into the case. And we're getting much closer to wrapping things up. So if you guys found this video useful, be sure to check out my Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter links in the video description. Be sure to hit the like button. It does help. And be sure to check out the next video in which I put everything together that we've done so far. And that's pretty much it. Hope to catch you in the next video. Enjoy.